Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to a new series. And sorry for my voice if you hear me odd, it's because I'm slightly uh, sick. I have something like the flu, cold, coronavirus. I don't know, not, don't know yet. Let's see. Uh, but I have been noticing that we have a lack of understanding on the channel about the room fundamentals in some parts. So uh, I have been revamping and rechecking all the lessons and everything that I have to finish or not. And I found that we need to focus a little bit on software independent uh, tutorials too. So we can make them uh, stand the, the time. So we'll start focusing on a series that will work at the same time in both softwares. Uh, so I can be 100% sure that it's not software dependent. And this first series is going to be the Grim Fundamentals. Uh, I want to divide the Grim Fundamentals in a very basic distribution of how the hair works, at least when we groom them. Once you work with hair, you have three basic controls. And these controls were three basic areas. And the first one will be the flow of the hair. So each type of hair that you take and each example of hair that you take will have flow. So here I'm an unsplash, my endless resources of good images. Uh, they're really high quality, as you all know, and we can find a lot of things. So first, I'm going to try to find something about the fur that will help us. Uh, let's start with something easier, like a pelf. So the first thing that we will find here, let's download this and use this as a complete reference. So let's go to the stock and download. So let's open this over here. Oops. And here we have it's a quite nice high ref image. So the first thing that we will find here it's the flow. The flow by itself, let me just use the same colors that I'm using here so we can have a good analysis of them. Uh, the flow by itself will be defined by how the hair moves along the way. Let's use a darker color just for the sake of seeing it. So the flow will be the direction of the strands, but it's important to notice that the flow itself reflects pressure. So if you see something like this and you keep building up, you can notice a pattern where the fur direction presses against the other type of fur and give us these kind of wave patterns that they all follow. And when one fur compresses against the other one, like this, we have the corresponding curve following this shape. So it's kind of a tight compression that you can read alone. This is really important to have because it adds a lot of real uh, integration and it's easier to read and looks more interesting if we have shapes like this. You can see this behavior. These curves pushes this one, which bends them. So this one pushes that one that bends them on the same way. So we have this pattern being created here. And here, as we have this one, we press it here these two are going in contrary directions and you can see that the ones that are in the middle are slightly more straight. So you can see how it goes outwards, this one towards the left all the way and this one is changing coming towards the right. And they all have the same kind of interpolation between them at one point. But we all also have messier places like this one here where they stack in layers and you can see how the movement gets messy, but we still follow some of these rules. So this one presses that one, so it has this small shape. This one presses here, so this one follows there. And this is the flow. The flow of the hair will define the first phase. Also, we have several values that are defined by the flow that are not necessarily the actual flow. Once the flow is defined, we have a connection between the flow and the per strand level. 
What's that connection? The flow and the pair strand will be united by the length. Because if a hair is too long, it will affect the other hair differently. Because if this hair is too short, it will not have this collision into account. It will take the smallest hair collision into account. So the length is the one of the only pair strand attributes that affects the flow. The width, not that much, but the flow being part of a macro level is affected kind of by the length. You can see here that the shorter hairs have more changes or sudden changes in direction and the longer hairs do not. So this is the basic of the flow and how the flow affects an actual uh, character. If we look at something like this, for example, a cat face, we can see here on this face that there is a really strict flow direction. If you look at this, it's really important to get the direction right because we have these compressions here. Let me just go for a brighter color so we can see it a little bit better. So you can see how the direction changes all the way to have from having this compression to have a more of a straight growing pattern over here. Then we have some slight jumps on the eyebrow and we go all the way to the new direction. But here it goes up again. So we can see here how things are starting to build up. This is really important once you start working on a character because that's what gives all the different variations and you need to set this level on the guides at the start because it will define how much your character has influence of their own hairs and will define the length will help a lot with different attributes of the clumps it will help to read the volume of this of the fur against the volume of the model so this part is one of the most important ones as it defines all the other things and all the other small things and this is on a macro level so we can manage without having to care that much about the clumps or the pair strand structures so this is how the flow works and if you go to something like uh, Houdini you have either Groomer or you have the guide process and this is as simple as if you have Groomer uh, this is the skin the skin goes to skin and BDB goes to BDB. And this one here will basically just be, uh, let me just change to Grumber, a comb brush. That will be the basic definition of uh, the flow itself. Let me just turn off my hair. Let's go inside here. And you can see how this will be one of the basic definitions of my actual uh, parameters. Let me just change to screen mode so we can see it. And let me increase the strength. So this will be how the actual fur collides and reacts to the other pattern. So this is how you work it on basically Houdini. Uh, depends on the amount of guides, obviously, but it affects and it creates the flow. If you are in a software like Xen, you have two different ways too. If you're with groomable splines, we are talking about basic uh, posing. So this is basically you posing your hair and giving the flow that you want. So one, sort, one force comes here and goes the other way and so on and so. So you can create a really nice flow and give a nice iteration over it and give a really nice result with not that many strokes. And it's basically the same effect that you will have on Houdini. So you choose, you decide how do you want to work. This uh, kind of behavior is probably because my surface is too big and I don't have enough uh, TPUs to actually blend it properly or uh, potentially change to interpolate and I will need more guides.
to be able to give a proper shape so we don't have this uh, let me go to smooth here that's better so we can have some nice flow changes and we don't have this issue of the broken guides so this is the flow on any of the softwares and this is basically how it works so there we covered the first the first side and how the flow affects and grow based on uh, different systems as always you can just create guide systems and just make your guides to follow the flow that you want to do and that will be completely valid again one of the things that I normally do is that I take a image like this one, I draw the fur and I draw the flow and try to copy it on my grooms. If I'm going to a really, really high complex face, that will be normally my main approach. So this is how the flow works. It's your macro level of definition that behaves of different forces that can pressure and will react along the way having different influences and they just naturally behave as a single entity that flows along the strands.